today we'll be creating one of my favorite text effects. The best part about this is that it doesn't have to be a text. You could use your own SVG logos or any other mesh that you create within Blender. It's going to be using dynamic paint, but it's actually very simple. With that, let's actually figure out how we can do this. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and tap X to delete the default cube and then we'll press Shift A and search for a text object. Then we'll press RX 90 to rotate it about the X axis by 90 degrees, which essentially makes it stand up like this. Now we'll go to our text properties and we'll just expand the geometry tab and increase the extrusion by a little bit to give it some thickness as you can see what's happening. Maybe I'll go with the value of 0.1 meters and then I'll go down to the actual paragraph alignment and I'll change the horizontal alignment to center. After that I want a much better font so I'll expand the font tab and I'll choose a better font. For today I'll use answer regular. Now I'll press tab to go into edit mode and I'll type whatever text I want. So maybe I'll go with logo and then based on your preferences you can always change the character spacing and things like that to suit your needs. Once you have that done, you can also add in a little bit of bevel to prevent these sharp edges from being existent. Under the bevel depth, just increase it from 0 to something very small, maybe 0 0.01, and that just rounds off these edges, which makes it look much better. Now, this is the main text on which we'll apply our effect. However, the problem with this is that you can't apply a dynamic paint modifier on a text object, as you can see. So the first thing that we have to do is convert this from a text to a mesh, which we can do by going to object and choosing convert to mesh. Mesh. However, if you were to go into edit mode, you can see that the topology is very unevenly spaced. You can see there are multiple vertices over here and almost no faces over here. So the distortion will not be uniform. To convert this into uniform topology, you can add in a remesh modifier. Once you add in the remesh modifier, you can choose different methods for remeshing, but I'll just use the voxel and I'll reduce the voxel size till I get it such that the entire letters can be seen properly. So maybe I'll go with a value of 0.01 and that should be enough. Try to keep this fairly low, but not too low because if you go way too low, Blender may crash and also it'll take much longer to calculate the effect. So I think this is going to be good enough for me. I'm going to make sure that I check smooth shading and that way you can't quite tell the rough edges. Once we're done with that, we can go ahead and apply this modifier so that we have nice good topology just like this. Now we can go ahead and add in the dynamic paint modifier to this object and the settings for the dynamic paint will be present in the physics tab. So let's go to the physics properties and we're going to keep the type as canvas, but we're going to have to choose add canvas. Now you can choose how many frames you want this effect to be. And since I want this to be just a five second long animation, I'm going to change the end frame to 150 over here. And even here, I'm going to choose 150 itself. If you want this simulation to actually work better, you can increase the number of sub steps but remember increasing this will also increase the time it takes to bake the simulation. I'll just go with a substeps of one, which should be good enough. After that, we have to go to the surface type and change this from paint to waves because we want to create waves as the brush passes through it. So let's change this to waves and you can play around with these settings based on your preferences as you test it out. For now, we have to first create the object that's going to create the waves. So let's press shift A and search for a mesh UV sphere. And again, we'll just scale it down to something like 0.2 or even smaller like 0.1. And of course, we'll go to object and choose shade smooth. Then we'll just press G Z and we'll bring it up to about the center of the word. If you want to see it properly, you can press one to go into your front view and then you can roughly eyeball it to the center by moving it on the Z axis only. Then you can press G X and move it to the left hand side of the logo, after which you can add in another dynamic paint modifier either from the modifier panel over here or technically you could go to the physics properties and add in a dynamic paint from here directly. That way, a dynamic paint modifier is automatically added in in the modifier stack. Now in the physics properties, this one we're going to change to brush and we're going to have to click add brush. The default settings should be all right. And with that, we can just add in a few keyframes for the location of this ball. So here we'll press I location while we're on frame one, after which we'll go to frame 150 minus a few frames. So maybe 120 so that there's some time for all the waves to settle down as well and we'll press GX and we'll move it over to the right hand side and we'll tap I location. Now when you play the animation, you should be able to have this ball interact with this logo and the waves should be created. Now, of course, these waves look way too strong, which is why we're going to select the text again and start playing around with all of these settings. For the damping, I'm going to maybe increase it down to 0.1 and I'm going to increase the smoothness all the way to 3. Now I'm going to go back to frame 0 and just replay the animation. And I think this looks much smoother for what I want 
wanted to create and that's good enough for my animation. If you're happy with the way everything's looking, go down to the cache option over here or the cache option, however you pronounce it, and just bake it. Remember, to bake the simulation, you have to save the file. So press Ctrl S and save it. Once the file is saved, you can go ahead and bake the simulation. Once the bake is complete, you can actually change the playback to frame dropping and then you can actually get a realistic idea of the speed at which the waves are moving and if you're not happy with it you can always delete the bake change the values around over here such as the time scale if you feel like it's going a bit too fast and things like that but once you're set with the way everything looks you can rebake the animation once that's done you can go ahead and set all of the materials so since this is a liquid i want it to be like water so i'm going to go and switch my viewport shading to rendered so that i can see the changes that i make i'm going to go to my render properties and make sure that i have bloom switched on and ambient occlusion switched on as well as screen space reflections. Within screen space reflections, I'm going to switch on refraction after which I'm going to go to my output properties. I'll change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change my output folder location as well as my file format. I'm going to make it FFmpeg video with a container of MPEG4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. Then in my material panel, I'll go ahead and give this the default material and I'll rename this to text material and I'm going to switch this from the principled BSDF to a glass BSDF. Now for the glass, the blend mode, I'm going to have to change to alpha blend so that it's actually see through and I'm going to switch off show back face and I'm going to switch on screen space refractions. Once that's done, this is actually going to be glass, but it's still going to be very hard to see without having the necessary background elements. So let's press shift A and search for a mesh plane and then let's scale this plane up by a large number. Let's just go with maybe 50. And now because the plane will refract through the light, the liquid actually looks a lot better. Apart from that, we'll also just press GZ and move the plane down by a little bit so that it's not perfectly touching the actual text and all of these ripples that are created will also not be intersecting with this plane. Next, with this text map selected, we'll maybe give it a slightly bluish color just by lifting this up like that. And that looks a lot better. Then we'll reduce the roughness from 0.5 to maybe 0.3. That should make it a clearer liquid. Once we have that set, let's go ahead and give the ball its material. So let's select it, add in a new material. This one will just make it a lot darker. We'll make the metallic all the way to one and the roughness will reduce to maybe 0.3 again. Next, we'll go to our world properties and we'll change this background to the brightest color for now, but then we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows. We'll click and drag to create a new window and we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then we'll press this to change it from object to world. And in the world, we're essentially going to create a gradient that goes from a nice orangish pinkish sunset color to a nice blue on top. So I'll press shift A and search for a gradient texture. And along with the gradient texture, I'll have have to search for a color ramp so that we can actually select the colors of the gradient texture. Now we don't have control over which direction the gradient texture is. So with the node wrangler enabled, we'll have to press control T to add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now we'll have to switch from generated to object, although this is not a strictly necessary step. And now we can plug this into the color of the background to see how the gradient is. And then we can go ahead and start rotating it till we get it exactly how we want. So we have to rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees. Next, we'll change this black to a bright value, but this nice orangish yellowish color, maybe right about there. And this white will change to the bright blue that we had, but we'll go ahead and just bring this in so that you can actually see the gradient right there. Now I think this is a bit too saturated. So just bring down the saturation and bring this closer. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and add in some sort of a sun, but instead of adding a sun disc, I'll just go ahead and add in a bright light at the back. So let's press shift A and search for a light and I'll choose point light and I'll just press GZ to lift it up by quite a bit and then GY to move it back and GZ to move it up again. And now in the light properties, I'm going to change the power from 10 watt all the way to maybe 10,000 watts. Then I'm going to change this color to that same orangish color and maybe I'll increase the radius as well just a little bit. Maybe instead of 10 watts, I went with 100,000 watts. Now let's go ahead and create the actual surface, which I want some sort of waves to be emitting outward. So I'll switch this over over from world back to object and now I'll add in a new material here. For this, I'll just make it completely metallic and I'll reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.2 just to see how everything looks, which is great. But now to create the waves, I'll press shift A and search for a wave texture. And again, with the node wrangler enabled, I'll press control T so that I can switch it from generated to object so that the waves actually come out from the origin, which is the absolute center. Then I'll switch this from bands to rings and from the x-axis to the z-axis so that we get them emitting outward. Next, let's take 
take this color and plug it into the roughness socket and we can instantly see the waves. However, I want these waves to be a lot closer to each other. So I'm going to increase the scale from five to maybe 10. Now, although this waves can be seen because of the roughness, I think it would be better if there was some more reflections occurring. So I'll press shift A and search for a bump node and I'll take this color and plug it into the height and take this normal and plug it into the normal. Now that looks like there's actual troughs and crests being formed and you can actually create the waves motion by playing with this phase offset. However, I think that it's a bit too strong. So let's reduce the strength from one to maybe 0.2 and that looks great. All we have to do is add in our camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we can press G Z and bring it up approximately halfway, followed by G Y to bring it behind the text. Then we'll press zero to go into our camera view and we'll continue to press G Y and bring it back till our logo fits perfectly within the scene. Now we just have to make sure that the sphere starts from outside the camera frame and ends as well outside the camera frame. Once you're happy with the way that looks, you can select the camera, go to the camera viewport display and change the passport out all the way to one. Then we can switch on depth of field so that we don't see the end of the actual C for which we're going to have to expand the drop down, select focus on object and just choose our text object. Then you can start reducing the f-stop until everything towards the back becomes completely out of focus. And I think for me, a value of 0.8 is creating it to be nice and blur at the back while maintaining focus all over this region. Once you're done with that, all you have to do is animate the waves. So let's select this base again, change the phase offset to zero. And you see the waves go outward when we go in a negative direction. So we're going to make this zero and on frame zero, we'll hover over it and tap I. And then on frame 150, we'll make it any even multiple of pi which means we have to say two star pi or maybe four star pi and so on and so forth. The larger the number, the faster the waves will move. So maybe I'll go with a value of four star pi. And then while hovering over the phase offset, I'll tap I. Now I have to select the actual wave texture node so that the keyframes appear here. And then down here, I'll have to press T and then switch the interpolation mode from Bezier to linear. And that way we should get a smooth wave that goes at a constant rate. Now I've accidentally made this positive two pi. It should have been negative. So let's just select this type minus 12 and then hover over it and tap I again. So now we should have it as a smooth loop as these waves emit outward. And this is what it looks like. Of course, you could always make a few changes here and there, but once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a fun one and it was really easy to follow along. Although it started touching upon slightly advanced concepts like dynamic pain. I post videos every single day. So if you like this one, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I'm sure there's something or the other just waiting for you to discover it. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.